Well, uh, one of the things that I'm trying to work with them with a bit is the idea of concepts versus tactics, right? Learning the concept of what you're going to do before you do it tactically, or I guess you could say knowing, understanding a concept gets you, makes you better at tactics, I guess. Yeah. You know, little things is like, especially dealing with the younger kids, you know, things like, and you've, you've done it a million times. Uh, you know, you put uh, three players around a circle and they pass, but they can't pass through the center of the circle. They have to rotate around and, and move to a spot where they can uh, present themselves and be available for a pass, that kind of thing. And I'm trying to get them to put, they have those mini nets. And I'm trying to get them to put a mini net on the dot because then you also visually now are forcing them to sort of look through the net and just kind of the concept of teaching them to look through the layers, right? Because when you're on the ice, you've got sticks, you got skates, you got legs. <clears throat> so trying to get them to do things like that so that they understand, the kids can understand the concept of what to do and then be able to put into practice tactically, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm I'm curious about choices of words to try to like for coaches, we we have concepts. And is that and just tell me if I'm wrong or not, does that mean getting open and making sure the lane is open? It's the imp concept there. Like I'm just trying to. Yes, that's yes, exactly. That's the, that's the concept. And then you now you have the tactic of well, first you got to be able to actually pass the puck accurately yeah. to get it through those lanes. Yeah. Well, Tom Beloy, if he gets on, I'm I'm going to get him to. Uh, he's written a book, ABC's of Sports, over 40 years ago. And he has four principles of teaching the game. And sort of concepts are built into them. And it's really a simple way for coaches to look at things. And um, I st struggle with coaches. They do a lot of deliberate practice. And what you're doing is it's sort of progressive deliberate practice. It's one thing to stationary pass, another thing to be moving in a deliberate pattern and passing and and then having nets there and randomly passing to different people that have to, have to be ready. And I, I call that progressive deliberate practice. And the actual games that you play small area whole ice it's chaos <laughs> but it is random practice in other words they've got to make decisions based on whatever the situation is so that's sort of to me the missing link in what we're doing in developing players moving forward yeah i i agree with that i mean it, it's it, it trying to get, I think, coaches, especially at the youth level, to understand the drill doesn't have to necessarily look pretty. Like the game doesn't always look pretty, right? There's weird bounces. A puck is behind someone. It's in someone's skates. So not concentrating on having the perfect looking drill. Yeah. Uh, but like you're saying, you know, having because things are random, having having it be an effective drill and teaching. I think that's the thing. I think you can really teach hockey IQ back in the day. They always said, well, you know, the kid either gets it or he, player gets it or they don't. But I, I think that's certainly changed in our approach to the sport in a good way. Yeah. I think it's the essence of what we're missing. Uh, I don't know out your way, whether anybody, let them just play and think for themselves and figure things out and is able to sort of 
teach that in a progressive way, but it it's what I deal with every day. I I find that at all levels, uh, the teaching of the skill, and I I refer to a tactical skill. Like right now, we're doing shooting with a, a, a company called Scoring. Uh, outstanding instruction, uh, instructions. And the kids are on plastic surfaces with their skates, gloves, and helmets. And they're working in pairs, and they have shooting targets in their own spaces. And they're shooting off the front foot. And uh, it's sort of like stepping into the shot. And back in your day and my day, I'm sure we, with wooden sticks, loaded up. So I used to teach, you know, handling a puck sideways, forward to backward, putting your weight on the back foot and using that inside edge to push and all the force through your legs to transfer into the puck to deliver by pushing and breaking and releasing. But you don't do that anymore. I don't flex of sticks now. Uh, and I just learned this two weeks ago at this scoring facility is they can bend the uh, shaft enough to create enormous force that they don't have to load up to shoot. And I found when does that translate to on the ice? In other words, they're on plastic surfaces more or less stationary, moving around slightly, but um, so there's a balance between still teaching, loading up, and then just shooting off the front foot. Yeah, no, no, for sure. And and I think uh, you, it's it's kind of like a carpenter, right? You got more the more tools you have in the toolbox, probably the better job you can do. And it's up to you to decide at some point which tool you select to use. Because yeah. Mark Messier, right, was famous for shooting off the front foot. And back then, everybody used to say, well, yeah, you're not supposed to do that. He can do it because he's Mark Messier. But that's changed. I think that's changed. I think, again, the more tools you have in your toolbox, now you as the carpenter, if you will, or plumber, whatever you might, how analogy you might want to make, it's up to you to choose the correct tool for the, the correct situation. 